In this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English term, the big screen. The big screen is simply another way of saying the movies. There might be an actor that you know really well and you see him quite often on the big screen. This would mean that that actor often plays roles in movies. So sometimes when you read a book, it might be adapted for the big screen. They might take that book and then make a script out of it and then make it into a movie and then you can go and see the same story that you read in the book. You can go see it on the big screen. The other term I wanted to teach you today is of course the small screen. The small screen is simply another way of saying the television. Now I'm not 100% sure if this also means Netflix or your phone, but definitely in the past and even still a little bit now we would say the small screen and we would be talking about the television. You might have a favorite actor who used to be in movies, but lately that actor has started to do more uh, to play more roles on the small screen. That would mean instead of being in movies, that actor is now normally seen on television. So to review, the big screen simply means the movies and the small screen simply means the television. I think you can understand where these terms come from, right? The movie theater has a very, very big screen and your television, I guess, is somewhat big, but not nearly as big as the movie theater. But hey, let's look at a comment from a previous video. This comment is from Lolly Lolly, I think. By the way, Oscar's just kind of, uh, jet, <laughs> nicely sleeping there. Oh, now he, he just kind of looked at me. I think he knows he's on camera. Shh, don't say anything. The comment from Lolly Lolly is this. Hello from France. Do you think that some of your children will follow in your footsteps on, footsteps on the farm? Thanks, Bob. My reply is, I'm really not sure. We're taking a wait and see approach. We're not pressuring any of them. Right now, it seems like they have a lot of other interests. So that's a great question, Lolly Lolly. Often it's hard to know as a farm dad and farm mom, it's hard to know if any of the kids are interested in working on the farm. Should we pet Oscar for a sec? Hi, puppy. Um, and we don't want to pressure them. We don't want to try, we don't want them to think that um, they have to do it. We know they have lots of other interests. They like computers, they like music, they like sports. There's all kinds of things that children are naturally interested in and we don't want to force them. We don't want to say you have to take over the farm. So we're taking a wait and see approach. A wait and see approach is exactly what it sounds like. You wait and you see what happens. So they're still quite young. We'll see what happens in a few years. What often happens with kids who grow up on farms is later in life, when they're in their 20s or 30s, they start to have fond memories of what it was like to be on the farm. Anyways, I wanted to come out this way to show you that this tractor is totally fixed. There is now a brand new tire right there. I am very, very happy. And my big tractor is also fixed. Now I say it's fixed, but really it just started working again. There was a repair person who was going to come, uh, but when I went down to get my tractor, I was going to pull this tractor up the hill with my other tractor. This one started fine and seems to be working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a wait and see approach. Before I get someone here to fix it, um, I'm just going to use it for the next few days. I used it yesterday and everything seemed to be fine. So I'm going to take a wait and see approach. I'm just going to keep using it. I, I've checked all the fluids. I've checked all the levels. I think it's okay. And we'll just see if it stops working again. Anyways, I'll see you in a couple days with another short English lesson. Bye.